fantastic. <laughs> Lovely day in Baton Rouge. Thank goodness it'll be cooler tomorrow, finally. Yeah, yeah, especially <laughs> when you guys sit outside in a suit for three hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you've been here before. What makes this place special when you do the show in Baton Rouge? Um, let's see. I think because, first of all, we're here, it's a big game. You know what I mean? So it's an electric, it's an electric atmosphere. Everyone's excited. There's a buzz around campus for the game. And um, Death Valley is um, probably one of the most intimidating places to play a night game in, too. And um, they got good food. <laughs> huh? you see, you seen some of the top teams across the country right now. Where, is, is LSU fifth in your mind, do you think? Or how, where, where do you think they are in this? Um, I think they're one of the top teams. I haven't really ranked them in any particular order yet. You know, and it changes weekly based on the performances, obviously. You know what I'm saying? So, um, not just etched in stone at this point, but they're clearly one of the um, the top teams, no doubt about that. We've seen LSU play for years, and when you heard they were going to change their offense, were you absolutely convinced until you actually saw it? Because it was always talk they were going to change it, and they never had. But right. were, you, were you the same way? Like, yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. I believe that was the um, the thought process going into it because, like you said, I mean, they've been pretty much stubborn about their way of running an offense for a number of years. And you always hear about, you know, they're going to make a, a tweak here or an adjustment there, and you never really see it. But um, it was it was really refreshing to see. Obviously, we were in Austin for the, the game against the Longhorns, and it was really refreshing to see them uh, play the style of offense that they uh, displayed that, that uh, evening. I think he's a, a really serious candidate. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but my cousin, my cousin Hershey, yeah, my cousin Hershey, he, he thinks that he's one of the top four or five candidates out there because of his performance against not only Texas, but the way he's been able to build off of that. And then you look at guys like Trevor Lawrence, who everyone assumed Coming into the season, he's going to just walk away with it, and I don't even think he's a top five right now. So you get guys like um, Joe playing extremely well, and so I think he's a serious cat. But my my cousin Hershey loves him. How dangerous do you think this defense is? I don't know, cause you know the Texas game they gave up a lot of points, a lot of yards against probably one of the better teams they faced this season. So we're going to see tomorrow night, and I you know I'm a guy who I don't judge you by just what you do, I judge you by who you do it against. And so this is another opportunity for them to show that they really can do it against, um, you know, a, 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 an offense that's pretty explosive, um, a really creative mind and Dan Mullen offensively. And uh, so this would be that opportunity tomorrow. Yeah, without a doubt. What seems different about LSU from when y'all were here last year for the Bama game compared to now? I mean, the obvious difference is the offense. I mean, that's just, you know, hands and shoulders, uh, to me, it's, it's hands down the, the biggest difference that anyone's seen, you know, and where they're throwing the ball around. And you probably get three of the, the best receivers in the country, and Joe Burrow is playing at a high level. So that's the, the biggest difference. Um, like I said, just answering the question about the defense, I need to see more out of that defense. That was, you know, that was a shootout in Texas, and you don't expect that from an LSU defense. When you look at this offense, what are you seeing? Is it the kind of offense like you would want to be a part of? You know, people say that like I didn't win the Heisman. You know, <laughs> uh, it would have been cool to get more balls, but you know, it is what it is at this point. It's it's a fun offense for the receivers. I was talking to uh, the two of them yesterday. I was at the practice, and it gives them a, an opportunity to shine. And I think um, it, it helps them as far as stand into the game. Because if you have an offense where the receivers are just like blocking like 75 to 80 percent of the time you know i don't think they're into the game as much as if you're throwing them the ball you know as much as joe burrow and and, and um, joe brady is starting to throw the ball to these guys now so it just keeps your spirits up keeps keeps you alive and keeps you involved it looked like you were talking to joe burrow yesterday after practice on thursday just kind of what are your impressions of him not only as a football player but as a person well, I couldn't answer the person's question. I haven't spent that type of time with him. I'm not going to sit here and blow smoke up your glutes. But uh, as, a, as a football player, I really like what I see uh, from Joe Burrow. I think he's a, you know, he's shown a lot of leadership. We talked about what took place last year. And, you know, he came in. Not a lot of time for everyone to get acclimated to each other. I don't think the coaches knew what they had in him. 
a lot of talent that you see this year, they were a year younger last year, so he didn't really know what talent he had. So a lot of stuff now is um, coming to the top and uh, people have a greater understanding of what the expectations are, what's, um, what, what they have in each other and uh, in the chemistry that they have. And another thing that's important is like after practice, like he went to the red zone and started throwing routes with the receivers, things that people just don't see. And so I asked him, I said, you know, did you guys do that this summer too? They said, yeah, at least twice a week, we would just get together by ourselves and we would run routes. We would go, go down the route tree and we would run routes in the red zone, things of that nature. So that explains why they have such good chemistry now. Because it just doesn't happen, you know, by chance. These guys put a lot of work into what you see happening on game day. Desmond, can you speak to the respect that Ed Ogeron is earning? You know, when he was at Ole Miss, he was, he was mocked. They made fun of him. He was kind of lampooned nationally. And USC maybe is kicking themselves for passing on him as the head coach. And you know, he's got them where they are right now, LSU. Um, well, winning does that. You know what I mean? He has a winning program right now. So far, so good. Um, you know, tomorrow's a big night. It's a big step in that direction. But so far, it, he's been able to win, you know, undefeated in 2019. So that goes a long way. But there's still a long road to travel. Very, Reese, very long road to travel. Uh, Reese was given his take on the uh, unfair pay to play act. What, what is, as a former college star yourself, how does that resonate with you? <laughs> um, I thought it was asinine that people could never get paid for their likeness. This was ridiculous. Yeah, I thought it was asinine. I'm a little late to the party, but what do you think, in your opinion, like, makes LSU fans different from all the other teams? <laughs> well, they started drinking brown liquor much earlier than other, other fans, especially when they tailgate. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a very unfair advantage for LSU fans. What do you think about the food? I know you guys all went out to eat last night. Had any gator or anything like that? No, well, um... They went out the. I went to a place called Albasha's because I love Mediterranean Greek food and I almost ate myself into a coma. And I don't eat beef and I don't eat pork, so I just had some chicken shawarma, some hummus, and um, some fried halloumi. Albasha's will be very happy to hear that. Yeah, I, had, I may go there again tonight. I was there by myself <laughs> right, go watching tonight. the Syracuse and NC State game, <laughs> enjoying myself. Check my check my oh yeah it'd be on my my Instagram feed maybe later on. If you're gonna go tonight, you gotta go to Zorba's down uh, down on Seagate. Zorba's is a good one. Yeah, it's authentic. Is it it's really? authentic Greek. Get so the saga knock. You said about our boshes is now there. It's like look, <laughs> I'm just saying you, you toss it out there like no, this was authentic though. <laughs> like these people like like they had okay. like mom and pop like <laughs> full big rush on everything. Okay. Get I'm the saga knock. It's like flaming cheese and they put it out with like lemon juice. It's really good. Yeah. Okay. I may, I may try. Uh, we'll see. So are, are we looking at tomorrow's game, uh, tomorrow's game, keys tomorrow's game on both teams for, to, to win? What are the keys? Well, at? the key to me is uh, first, you got to win the turnover battle. I think it's important to win the turnover battle. Second, second of all, I think um, LSU's defense not to be, play much better than we've seen them in the you know the only other big game they had, which is the Texas game. Um, if you let um, Florida get the roll in with Trask, who. You know, I'm assuming he's coming here kind of hobbled. You know, I'm sure you guys saw the Auburn game. He sustained an injury that we were all pretty surprised that he even came back from. But if they let these guys get rolling, you know, this could be another shootout. So I would say, first of all, our defense got, you know, have uh, gap integrity. Uh, the, the defensive backs are going to be tested because the Gators got some pretty good receivers too. But you got to definitely win the turnover battles. Last question, guys. You mentioned the defensive back. Oh, man, it's just uh, – until you can show it on the field, I don't want to hear it. Yeah, just put it up on the field. Thank you.